Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the Blind 75 in C++ and today we are working on the problem set matrix zeros. But before we get started, make sure that we always uh, break up the following question in our formulation. We need to figure out what the input is, what is our expected output, and what data structure slash algorithm slash technique to use, and what to do with the data. All right, so just to give a rundown and everything else so that way we fully understand the question, let me just get all these comments set up in place. You can follow along too, side by side. So, given a breakdown of the question, given an M times N integer matrix, if an element is zero, set its entire row and column to zero. So. It's pretty self-explanatory over what we have. So if we find a zero within our given example that we have of our matrix, we are going to set all the rows and the columns accordingly to zero of everything that it touches. Okay. We are going to set all of the touching uh, elements, which are associated with zero in the input to zero for our output. That's pretty self-explanatory from the first example and the second example accordingly. And so what we will be doing is that we will be introducing a technique uh, called iteration where um, if a zero is found we are going to set the first cell of that row and column to zero. Then we are going to uh, iterate again if the first cell of a row or column is zero. We set the entire row or column to zero. Accordingly. So that means we're going to be looping throughout the rest of our given uh, throughout the uh, rest of our given matrix that we will have. Right here. Let's put the notes down here. right here okay and a uh, given input that we have we have a matrix matrix and we are supposed to return a matrix with corresponding uh, zeros so what we are, will be doing is that for a following way we are going to first Uh, 2D matrix. So the steps we are going to be doing to be able to get through all of this is that for the first step, if a zero is found at cell, let's just say for example, cell I and cell um, I of J, as our, as our initial one, we're going to set the matrix accordingly, this one, and matrix 0, J, to 0 accordingly. Step 2. We're going to iterate over the matrix again to uh, indicate we have a modification in place if matrix I of zero or matrix 
whenever we have a row or a column is zero, we're going to set matrix i and j to zero. Then in step three, we're going to be now putting the modified matrix. And so I'm going to be expanding upon the pseudocode to be able to help break down over what we need to do. So what we will be doing in this case is that for each cell in the matrix, for step one, if the cell value is zero, we're going to set the first cell of the corresponding row and column to zero. And then what we'll be doing for step two is that we're gonna be doing the same thing we did for step one except we're going to be iterating over again. So for each cell in the matrix, if the first cell of the corresponding row or column is zero, we're going to be setting the cell value to zero. And again, step three is very self-explanatory we will be operating our modify matrix accordingly. So to be able to give everything that is already set in place, what we need to do for a very, very first step is that we are going to initialize everything to begin with for our matrix, uh, assuming that we have not visited it. So first initialize our matrix to start and step one we're going to initialize our matrix and assume we have not visited any row or column yet which is zero then step two we're going to set accordingly step three we're going to do the same and then step four so these would be four simple steps that we would have initially so step one, we're gonna first initialize our matrix and assume that we have not visited anything yet. So we have M representing the relative matrix dot size we have, which is a technique in C plus plus, int N, which is matrix row dot size accordingly. And then we are gonna have two Boolean conditions to see if it is zero or not. So first row zero, we're gonna first consider it false because we haven't visited anything yet. And the first column of zero is going to be false since we haven't visited anything yet. Now we're gonna focus on step two accordingly that we have up here. If we found zero cell uh, I and J, which is a first indication in step, so that means we're gonna have two for loops accordingly, one for I and one for J, and I is going to be zero, I is gonna be less than M accordingly, which would be the size that we have already s initialized up here. Just for the sake of clarity, you can always use matrix.size, uh, doesn't really matter between them, as long as you're able to get the solution right, and then we're also gonna be iterating over J, that will also represent the column, so int, uh, J is going to be zero. J is going to be less than uh, the relative um, size. Accordingly, I J plus plus. All right, here we go. And now we're going to have our if statement over here. If the cell value is zero, okay. If matrix i and j are going to be equal to zero then what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be set matrix i for the row j for the column matrix zero and j accordingly will be zero to start and then if I is going to be equal to zero. We have indicated that the first row zero is considered going to be zero accordingly, which would therefore be true. Same thing for J as well. There we 
go. First call zero, first call zero. Yes, indeed, we got that. Let's see if we are moving forward. And now we're gonna iterate over again, except for the key difference between the two is that we are going to have a different type of element that we have already visited. That's not gonna be the very first one. So. accordingly this is why we do this so I can basically do this entire for loop again for the sake of clarity except we're gonna replace this as one and also this one as one two because we're iterating over the array again accordingly except for this time we are going to be checking to see if a row or a column is going to be equal to zero and then we're gonna set everything to zero so this is going to be our modification if matrix i here we go is equal to zero or this represents the row and we're gonna have the same for the columns zero and j accordingly for the row and the column so this would be for the column this would be for the row since I is the row, J is the column, accordingly, yes, and then we're going to set everything to zero. So matrix I and J is going to be zero accordingly. Now we're going to have our edge cases over here. If now this will be the case where if it is true, so if first row zero is true, we are going to be going over the entire column accordingly. J S N, which would be J plus plus matrix. That's because we're gonna set our row to zero and then J accordingly will be that. And now we'll do the same for the for the columns. Converting rows to zero. Converting columns to zero. First row zero, first call zero. I zero. I I M I and since we are, this will be our output that we would have accordingly. Output is right here. This can also be indicated as our output too. But here, this one as well. Right here. There we go. So let's check to see if everything runs accordingly. Make sure that we don't have any syntax errors to start with. It's still going through. It passes all the test cases. And we will submit this one. Okay, and it all checks out. Now I'm gonna clean this up for you folks so that way you folks can actually understand and fully see the problem. So let me just go back. And clean all this up for you. All right, so this is our following solution. Actually, I'll clean this up even more. So this is our following solution that we have over here. So to give a rundown and breakdown of our time and space complexity for our following solution is given the fact that we have a series of rows and columns and we're keeping track of everything that has already been visited uh, 
to start making a series of Boolean conditions. Uh, our time complexity is going to be relative to the uh, number of rows and columns accordingly. So therefore, our time complexity is going to be O of M times N. However, the good news is we're not using a data structure to store anything that has already been tracked. We are only scanning through the rest of the matrix. So therefore, our space complexity is going to be very efficient for this, which is going to be O of uh, 1, which will therefore be linear and not constant, since we're not using any extra space to be able to store anything that we have already set in place. And people can solve this problem with a map or a... Uh, set accordingly to store everything. However, within the efficiency of our space complexity, this is why we're just scanning throughout the rest of the array to be able to have a set solution. All right, so this was set matrix zeros. Thanks again for taking time to watch this. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. And, you and if you have any comments, feel free to put them in the comment section. As always, take care. Cheers. Goodbye.